Hello and welcome to another edition of Chat with the Chief. As always, I'm your Chief Jared Mills, and today I'm here with a very special guest talking about a very uh, serious topic that we're all dealing with now, COVID-19. Uh, Lieutenant Chamberlain, uh, you're a 20-year veteran of the uh, Augusta Fire Public Safety EMS uh, squad. Um, is that about accurate? It is. Yeah. Awesome. So you're the, you're the perfect person to talk to about the situation we're in. Obviously, we've been meeting for uh, several weeks now, uh, pl uh, planning, preparing, working with the CDC uh, and our partners, both state and local. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on and what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, so from the Augusta Fire standpoint, uh, we've formulated a team and uh, we have a, a group of us that's meeting regularly, have been meeting regularly for weeks now leading up to this. Uh, and then we're conversing on a daily basis multiple times a day as things come in. Um, everything that we're operating on is under the direction of the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, both at the state and national level. Basically, they're guiding our response, anything that we're doing. Um, a lot of these plans we've had in place, it's just revamping them to this particular emergency and, and putting them to work. What can people expect when you folks arrive at the door? What are they going to see? They're going to see us asking them some questions at the door about whether they've traveled, whether they've had a fever, whether they've had a cough. A lot of these questions are going to be repeat questions that they already got from the dispatcher initially. Um, and it's just for our own safety and their safety to re-ask those questions. The other thing that's going to happen, if we, de if we determine that they are potentially a COVID-19 um, patient, we're going to ask them, we're going to hand them a mask, and we're going to ask them to put that on themselves. If they're unable to do that, at that point, we're going to have put on our protective gear and we'll, we'll assist them with that um, through that process. We're, we're there to help. The whole goal here is for us to be there to help you in your emergency, but at the same time, we need to keep our staff safe so that they're available for other people later on, as well as also we don't want to transmit something that we may have picked up to you. Um, we've put in new uh, decontamination process for all the rigs, um, which will require some time. So there's going to be some delay between getting from call to call. Uh, but the questions that you're going to be asked are the traditional ones that you've heard on all the social media and, and, and in the regular media. Have you traveled? Have you been with someone that's um, got COVID-19? Um, do you have a fever and a cough? And those are the key terms, the fever and the cough. Those are the things we're going to ask. Um, with that said, uh, if you develop those symptoms or you have been with someone, uh, it is good to give your, your own physician a call first before calling us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you have a respiratory distress case or you're having chest pain, then call us and we'll be there. Excellent, yeah. So it sounds like the, the response is still there, still gonna be there for, for every call. It just may be a little bit, may look a little different, a few extra questions. Right. And we're asking the public to be uh, uh, mindful of that and uh, patient, if you will. So all good stuff. Um, and, and that's the idea, right? That social distancing for us, uh, for our own employees, like you say, um, you know, with the folks we work with, we're taking every precaution to, to keep that distance sanitized appropriately. Um, and it really comes down to that uh, flattening, right? That yeah. flattening of the curve, they call that. Can you kind of talk about yeah. what we're trying to accomplish with sh uh, shutting the schools down, shutting government buildings down and that type of thing? So the flattening the curve, that's a term that CDC has been using a lot the last few days. Um, it's, a, it's something we've learned from other epidemics and pandemics in the past. Basically, what we're trying to do is we know that this is going to be out there for a while. What we... What we want is we don't want it to peak all at once because that'll put a, a real strain on the system. Um, so we're looking at um, different varieties of how can we keep people isolated so that this will go on over a period of time so we can better serve you and take care of you. Really, that's a lot of what we're doing in the police department as well. Uh, we're looking at how our offices are set up, how the building's set up, doing that spacing. A uh, little few more questions with us as well. Uh, you know, as far as when you call for a response by a police officer, if it's an emergency situation, we're going to be right there. Uh, we're going to handle the situation, obviously. But uh, certainly if it's a situation where uh, we can call you on the telephone to resolve something, you may get that follow-up conversation from a police officer. Um, and that's that whole idea is to limit the contact um, that's going on. And, you know, you made me think of something, too, is absolutely. And this is nothing new for us. Right. I mean, we've we've had pandemics before. These disaster plans are in place. Uh, we're not operating off a new sheet of music. This is really just dusting off the plans uh, from our past and trying to uh, or basically looking at how it can be uh, honed into this specific situation. Is that correct? 
Exactly. We're just taking the old plans and where it said H1N1 or Ebola before, we've just put in COVID-19 and we're continuing on with business as usual. Yeah. So that's really the message we want to extend is we're prepared. Uh, we've been doing this for weeks. It isn't like we're behind the eight ball or the curve. This is kind of that progression. The reason why things are shutting down this week uh, is because we're looking at what's happened nationwide and we want to get ahead of the situation rather than behind it like some other countries. Um, is there anything else you can think of, Lieutenant, that we're uh, missing or we haven't discussed before we close? There's just a couple of things I'd mention. Um, the first is 211 is a great resource for information. If you're having um, trouble getting you know, supplies or you have questions that just aren't getting answered, that's a great place to go. That's a state resource. The other thing that the city of Augusta has done as of this morning, we set up a uh, email address, COVID19 at AugustaMaine.gov. Uh, and that's a great place to send a question that you may have that will get filtered down to who it needs to get to uh, as it relates to, you know, whether, you know, it's a question about where can I get this supply or where can I talk to somebody about this problem um, at that time, you know, those are great places. Um, also, I'd, I'd mentioned checking in on your neighbors, just making sure everybody's okay and that they got what they need. Um, we do have, you know, a, a high elderly population in the city. Um, so check in and see what they need and what we can do to help them out. Yeah. And that's a great uh, that's a great closing line for this too. Is that those are our really the folks that we really want to get the word out to that don't necessarily get, uh, uh, don't necessarily get our social media sites and uh, see those things online and uh, see the CTV seven. If you know of somebody who is of the aging population or shut in, you know certainly if you can't get to them to assist, give us a call and we uh, are on standby to help out with that too. So that's a, a great way to close. Um, that's all for now. We'll see you next time.